What's up everyone? This is the first video in a series that will be looking at planning your next landscape photography adventure. Today's video is all about choosing your next location. I'll show you how I take advantage of the social networking site Meetup with some specific ideas for those that live in Washington. Ever since I moved to the Pacific Northwest, I've been trying to find and explore the best landscapes, and I want to share some of the strategies I've learned with you. Probably the most important consideration to choosing a location, and perhaps while you're here, is the desire to connect with and express our personal vision. To help with this, let's go over some clarifying questions. What are you drawn to shoot, and what type of image do you want to create? Let's say you are really drawn to shooting water. Maybe the serenity that comes with a glacier-fed alpine lake. Or maybe it's the energy of a flowing waterfall that you're after. There are powerful ways that we can limit our location search to only include destinations with the features that we're after. You may be thinking that this all seems pretty obvious. And anyways, the specific compositions of a good many images in my portfolio were not pre-planned, but rather were impromptu in response to something I saw in the moment that resonated with me. But getting in touch with our intent from the start helps us pre-visualize. And some basic planning goes a long way to improving our chances of executing our vision in the field. How much time do you have to commit? This will determine how far we can go. Many of my favorite images were made deep in the wilderness somewhere where I could truly connect with nature. But some of the most beautiful and photogenic areas are easily accessible and we don't always have the means or desire or time to commit to a longer trip. In the mountains especially, it isn't as easy as looking at the work of other photographers on sites like 500px, since timing the conditions right is absolutely critical. Maybe not in a place that doesn't change so much seasonally, like Florida, but anytime you're in the mountains, conditions can change so much in such a short period of time that the difference of a couple weeks can make or break your ability to access and photograph an area. Luckily, Meetup takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. For those that don't know, Meetup is like the social network for activities, from photography groups, to basket weaving, to raw food groups, to chess clubs, to nudists. Pretty much anything you can think of, there's a group of other like-minded people who want to come together. Moving on, on to Meetup. I'm here in Seattle, so we'll use that as an example. Okay, so we're here on meetup.com, and when you first log in, uh, set up your own account if you don't already have one. I already have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And you can see here that it brings you to a dashboard view of your account. Uh, right up here, this lists your next scheduled meetup and so I have a trip planned to climb Mount Hood and that is with the Seattle Outdoor Adventurers. That's the group that is hosting this meetup. And when you first set up an account, what you'll want to do is come over to your profile tab and you want to fill out all of the interests, hiking or photography or anything else. And then based upon those interests, Meetup will recommend different groups to you and you can also search for groups. So kind of coming back to the main page, you would just go to here and start typing in things that you're interested in. In our case, we're interested in the outdoors and hiking and in photography. So if we type in here, hiking, you can see here it brings us a number of events hosted by different groups. One of those groups being Hike to a Summit. We have the Seattle Backpackers Meetup Group, Seattle Area Photoshop User Group, and the Seattle Outdoor Adventurers Group. This is the one I am most familiar with. It is actually the largest outdoor organization on Meetup with over 17,000 members. Um, and it happens to be centered right here in Seattle. And it actually will work as an excellent example for how we can use meetup for trip ideas. Here in uh, the Seattle Outdoor Adventurers, it is led entirely by experienced hikers and climbers. And so each meetup that SOA organizes, it's timely and it's filled with info. And so for us, this is priceless. 
And SOA is special to me because when I moved to Seattle, it was my favorite resource for going on hikes in new areas. And I've made lifelong friends that I still hike with. So SOA, you know, they tailor trips for all ability groups from casual to serious mountaineering. They just do a great job of bringing people together through adventure. And so I want to show you a couple of the ways that I use Meetup for location scouting. So there are two ways that I use Meetup. As I've alluded to, you can hike with the group, especially if you haven't been to the area before. You'll bring your camera and some gear, of course, but since you'll be hiking with the group, you know, the shots you'll get will be more of those candid snapshot on the trail style of photos. This isn't ideal for those images that require waiting for the perfect light, but I personally come away with several keepers this way. And this gives you excellent research on the route and future possibilities for a return with a more photography focused trip in mind. Worst case scenario is you hiked in a beautiful place and made a couple new friends. The second method is to simply look at the meetups being posted and go hike them for yourself so that you can do the whole sunrise and sunset thing at a photographer's tempo and pace. Now, one thing to point out is that it is bad practice to sign up for an outing if you don't plan on hiking with the group. So if you do sign up initially to see the trip details, make sure you cancel your RSVP with plenty of time to allow others to join. But let's continue on here and see if we can't find an alpine lake that we can go and photograph. So here's one about waterfalls and the enchantments and inspiration lakes. So this is in the Alpine Lake Wilderness area. And so we'll pull this up. This could be a good option for us. There's some details about the meetup. Um, here's some of the red tape that's important for us to know, like what type of pass is required, the fact that we're not supposed to bring dogs, uh, some safety issues with goats. Um, there's also a very timely piece of advice here, potential snow hazard, which would require specific gear. And so you can go through here and it looks like that would be a good idea for us to do a little bit more research on. One thing I absolutely love about Meetup is the ability to customize your notifications and uh, I basically have it set up here under my profile to have all notifications for Seattle Outdoor Adventurers. There will be other groups where you, that's not necessarily the case and it'll be a nuisance but with your favorite groups you can literally have trip ideas delivered to your email address every single day. Once I get a location that I think will work my next stop is usually over to the Washington Trails Association or WTA. It's an excellent organization. They do a lot of stewardship and their primary purpose is as a trip database. And that's what we'll be taking a look at today. Okay, so let's get logged into WTA.org. Here we are. And the first thing that you'll probably want to do is get logged in or create an account so you can log in. And they have this My Backpack feature. And what this does is allow you to save not only your past hikes, but also the hikes that you're looking forward to do. So it's a great resource. You wanna check out all the features of this site. They have a lot of well-written and timely articles on uh, conditions and different hikes and different ideas. Uh, what we're mostly interested in is finding that inspiration, isolation, and cold chuck lakes. So we can go up here to the search, type in Inspiration Lake, and here we are, the enchantments. And within the enchantments, it's a, just an absolutely wonderful area. If you haven't been, um, it's, a, it's a very popular hike and for good reason. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see here the rating. It's a long one, 18 miles. You can split it up. Uh, you can apply for a lottery system to get a permit and uh, camp back there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So highly recommend you look at that. Um, you can see here that's saved my backpack. I've done this one a number of times and it's definitely still not old. So why we're here is you can see up here uh, a number of badges and this right off the bat kind of tells you what's in store for you if you go into the enchantment. So we can see here we have the potential for wildlife, we're gonna summit, there's lakes there, or there's rivers and streams, wildflowers, mountain views, established campsites, there's waterfalls. I mean, could you ask for anything more? And holy smokes, do we think we can make uh, beautiful photos uh, with this? I think so. And so the way it's organized is typically they're going to have a long write-up on the area. Down at the bottom, they usually have some great tips for your trip. Here's a map with exact coordinates for the trailhead, and I find that these are very, very accurate, more accurate than the ones that Google has. So these coordinates will always point to the trailhead, not to the peak. Here we can see kind of the categorization of the hike. This is a really, really nice feature, especially for those longer hikes where we're going deep into the backcountry and our cell phone uh, might not have enough juice to last us. And we want to print out a paper map 
and bring a compass with us. So this is really good. This gives us the name of the maps that we we would want to pick up. Some driving directions and again some pass information. Why we're really here is for the trip reports. And here you can see that there are 404 trip reports of people who have hiked through the enchantments and decided to come on and contribute um, a little bit about their experience. So let's just click on the first one. This was three days ago. And guys, this is why this is such a great resource because we can see that whatever we're about to do might be pretty similar to something that happened three days ago. So let's click on this. Brings us in. I believe that's Mount Rainier in the background there. And here it gives us some conditions. There's some snow fields to cross. Could be difficult. Looks like there's just a small little write-up with a full report below. Wow. So this would, would be called one of the Tarns, T-A-R-N-S, which refers to high altitude alpine lakes that are typically frozen partway uh, through the year. So um, here we're actually going to link out to this person's blog. And um, you think that might be a bad thing, but typically that means that we're gonna have a pretty good write-up. And so here you can see a very good write-up of the entire enchantment loop. This is Colchuck Lake, the most popular lake in Washington. Absolutely beautiful. And here is a mountain goat. Side note, they're not actually uh, true goats. They're more closely related to antelope, which probably explains why they're so nimble on their feet. Okay, and just really, really good information here. We have the GPS information, you can see. Uh, we have the trail, as well as a number of photograph locations. Looks like this might have been pulled off Google Earth, some sort of uh, screenshot. And it also has the names of all the lakes that we were looking at on Meetup and then some. So you can see here the different locations. Um, this is great information here. This is GPS information, which shows you your elevation uh, profile of the hike. So as you go at mile four, at mile six, mile eight, mile 10, you can see what type of elevation gain and loss that you're gonna come across. And some pictures for us to take, take in, some wildlife. And then, yeah, so this is a really good way for you to get some more information. This is a, a great example. Um, and this might be something that I wanna take a, uh, a deeper look at. Maybe we're gonna make a trip this way. Another way to use WTA is to use their hike finder map. So let's swap back over to that tab and come back up to the hike finder map. And so I love this feature of WTA. It's a lot of information at first, but what you can do is you just narrow in on an area that you might want to go to. And then over here, this refers back to what we were talking about earlier. Do we want to go on just a stop and, and quick shot? Do we want a, day, a full day hike? Or do we want something that's a little bit more backcountry that would include an overnight trip? So we can decide on our mileage here, our elevation gain, and then we can choose our features, those elements that we want to photograph, those elements that we really feel like we want to connect with. We can choose those right here and search, and it'll bring up a number of hikes. You can then sort by most recently updated or or by rating, it's just a really great feature. So that's how you can use Meetup and WTA to help you choose your next photo spot. In summary, it all starts with our vision. Then we wanna consider how much time do we have to commit. And then we head on over to Meetup and WTA to find somewhere that speaks to us. Now that we have a location in mind, it's time for photo and composition scouting. And we'll leave that for a future video. Hopefully this was useful. If you have any questions about choosing a photo spot, or if you have any tips of your own that you'd like to share, then I'd love to hear them in the comments section below. And please subscribe so we can continue this good thing we've got going on. You'll just come down to the bottom of the video and click right here on the subscribe. And until next time, wishing you grand adventure and good life.